My name is Jason, and this is Just Watches. Okay, today we have a watch from Christopher Ward. Now, I got a C60 Sapphire from Christopher Ward last year, and it remains, to this day, one of my favorite watches. So when the opportunity to borrow and review a Sealander from them arose, I was excited to check it out. Now, before we get to the review, if you're enjoying the content of this channel, I invite you to subscribe. And if you're enjoying the contents of this individual video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much. So for price and availability, this watch is currently available on the Christopher Ward website and is $750 on the strap and $895 on bracelet. Now keep in mind, you can usually get $125 off any purchase. That is a coupon that Christopher Ward generally runs all the time. The case is 39 millimeters in diameter, excluding the crown guards. It's only 45.5 millimeters lug to lug. It's 11.5 millimeters thick, but about a millimeter of that is this sapphire crystal. And then it has a 20 millimeter lug with opening. Now on this tied strap, it weighs in at 73 grams. So this is Christopher Ward's light catcher case, which is a bit hard to describe, but essentially they scalloped the mid case with high polish surfaces, as well as have high polish on the edge of the bezel. The overall effect in person is a very visually interesting and beautifully finished watch. Now we also have integrated high polished crown guards that curve out to enclose the crown and then very angular lugs. Overall, the finishing is well executed and the transitions between the types of finishing are sharp. Now, this case is basically the same as on the C60 Sapphire I own, but it's a full two millimeters thinner. And I think this makes the case look just that much better. Also with that sub 46 millimeter lug to lug, this one's going to be very wearable even on smaller wrists. So this review model came with the Tide strap, which I was actually really curious about. So this strap is made from 100% recycled ocean plastic. The strap is thick and tends to hold its shape, but it's also soft to the touch. I think it will take a really long time to break in, but I have a feeling once it does, it will be super comfortable. Now the strap starts at 20 millimeters and doesn't taper. The hardware is signed and brushed with two loose keepers. Like all Christopher Ward straps, it uses quick release pins, which is great because it's easy to switch out for other straps and even their bracelet, which uses quick release pins. Now I was able to take advantage of this to try this watch on that bracelet, which I will show off in the wrist shots section. The screw in exhibition case back is gonna help provide 150 meters of water resistance. Here we get a view of the Salida SW200. Now Christopher Ward uses a custom rotor with their twin flag logo engraved on it. This in combination with a few brass colored components of the movement makes the view of the movement through the exhibition case back very interesting. Speaking of that movement, this is the Salida SW200, which is an automatic hacking, hand winding, 28,800 vibration per hour movement with a 38 hour power power reserve. Now Christopher Ward uses the slightly higher grade, which is adjusted and accurate to plus or minus 7 to 20 seconds a day, and it is also supposed to be regulated in three positions. You are seeing we are getting great accuracy on this one. It's actually running better than specifications at about plus 5 seconds a day dial up with excellent amplitude and then plus 4 seconds a day with the crown up. The 6 millimeter screw down crown is really well finished. So the crown is signed with the Christopher Ward double flag raised in high polish against a blasted background. And then the knurling of the crown is very large and very easy to grip. Now it's blasted, but then the tops of each of the knurls are brought back up to high polish. It's really beautiful in person. And then the crown also uses a clutch system. So when you are re-threading the crown, it actually disengages the winding mechanism and makes it extremely easy to re-thread. The flat sapphire crystal is about one millimeter proud of the bezel with a large facet around the edge that catches light and causes cool distortions. Now it is also treated with an excellent application of anti-reflective coating, which really helps show off the lacquer dial. Speaking of that lacquer dial, it is gorgeous in person. I was shocked at just how deep the black of the dial is that I immediately had to take out and compare it to my Seiko Urushi dial. So it doesn't have the same wet ink look of the Arushi dial, but as far as I could tell, it's just as deep of a black color. And I was really surprised by that. Now there is no chapter ring, rather there are dashes at the edge of the dial with a red dot at each of the hour positions with their respective minutes and Arabic numerals. The applied indices are also extremely well done with a brush top and then a high polish facet towards the center of the dial. All of these indices are filled with loom. Now the branding of Christopher Ward draws a lot of criticism and I believe they are moving towards only using their double flag logo on their newest models, but here they moved Christopher Ward to the 12 o'clock position. Now this along with the 
date at 6 completes the symmetry of the dial. The date at 6 actually suffers from the same problem as my Arushi dial in that the dial is so black that it makes the date wheel actually appear gray in contrast. And then finally we have automatic and the depth rating in red at 6 o'clock. I love the small splashes of red throughout the dial. It really adds a little bit of character to this otherwise very monochromatic watch. Now, just like the crown and indices, the hands are another place that Christopher Ward excels. The top of both the hour and minute hand are brushed, but the edges are faceted and high polish. They are also filled with loom. Now, this mix of finishes and then loom makes the hands extremely legible in almost any lighting condition. The minute hand is plenty long and reaches to the dashes around the edge of the dial. And then the second hand features that Christopher Ward Trident counterbalance, which is a very fun and playful detail that I'm a huge fan of. Finally, the tip of the second hand is painted red. Well, I know Christopher Ward has been working on improving their loom, and they finally did it in my opinion. Here is the Sealander keeping up with Seiko loom, which is kind of the standard for me. I'm really happy happy to see they got the loom to this level and I'm a little bit sad because it's not this good on my C60 Sapphire. And here is the watch on that tide strap on my six and three quarters inch wrist. This is a great size. Those short lug to lug distances really make a watch incredibly wearable on smaller wrists. And then just because I have it and it fits, here it is on the Christopher Ward bracelet. I love this bracelet. It has the built-in quick adjust in the clasp and I think it's extremely well built overall. So pros and cons starting with the pros, well this enamel dial is beautiful in person and I don't think it fully comes through in video or pictures. Second, all the finishing and small details on the case, crown, hands, and indices are very well executed. Finally, the 60 month warranty that Christopher Ward gives is competitive with luxury brands and just not something you're going to get from many other watches in this price point. It's very difficult for me to find any major cons with this watch, so I will just add two areas of possible improvement. First, the tide strap is fraying a bit where the end of the strap meets the head of the watch, so I think the strap is just a little too thick on that spring bar end. Second, I would love to see Christopher Ward start to use a scratch resistant coating. This is something that Seiko does at this price point and is also being offered by a number of other micro brands as well. So for comparables, this watch has a very competitive price point. For about the same price, you could consider something like the Helios Universa. Unfortunately, I haven't handled that watch, but it's widely regarded as excellent. And then Another brand I have handled and have been impressed by is Tissot. They make the Gentleman Powermatic 80 at this price point. And then for a bit more, you could move up to something like the Formex Essence 39. I did briefly get to handle one at Windup, but haven't done a full review. And then finally, for quite a bit less, you could pick up something like the ISL 36 Islander from Long Island Watch. So there you have it, the Christopher Ward Sealander. What do you think about this watch? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, if you're enjoying the contents of this channel, I invite you to subscribe. And if you like the contents of this individual video, please give it a thumbs up. That's all for this time. My name is Jason, and you have been watching Just Watches. <laughs>